Hey everybody and welcome back here in my lovely home studio to the Friday Video Blab with me, Lottie Hearn, your host today, with um, still a little bit of my orange nails left over from my holiday. So hope make sure they're not distracting too much today. Oh yeah, had a fantastic holiday. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to get back to work, isn't it, when you've been away on holiday? And then also getting back and hearing such tragic news. Terry Brock, I know you're in the room. Um, in Orlando, in your part of the world, your neck of the woods, um, horrible, horrible, horrible situations happening over there. And we had very similar here yesterday with one of our fantastic um, West Yorkshire MPs who got shot. This is one of the first, first female ever politician in the UK who uh, got shot for standing up for, for somebody standing up and shouting out um uh, horrible tragic nasty xenophobic things so uh, horrible oh, only 10 10 miles away from you where the orlando shooting occurred terry well look um love um i hope you didn't know anybody who was there yourself or your friends and family and um hey folks part of what i love about doing blab is the fact that this actually brings us together and connects people and that's actually what your videos can do for people too. But part of the thing when you're doing your videos is, yeah, sometimes you can do them like this on your own, chatting away. And I can, like I was, talk to myself for, for a while uh, when I had no sound last week or you end up chatting to somebody. Thank you so much, the wonderful Terry Brock, for saving me. Last week's topic was all about what do you do when that hmm, hits the fan? You have a Terry Brock in the house. That's what you need to do. You have somebody there who's uh, supporting you and helping you out. And I think that's another lovely thing with doing the live stream style of videos is that, um, yes, it's connecting people. It's bringing people together. It's spreading business news and positivity and health, wealth and happiness around the world. That's what we want to do. That's our community that we've discovered here in Blab and uh, fantastic business people that we found here and connecting with. Wonderful, wonderful people. And I'm just going to check who else is in the room here with me today. We've got Terry. Said hello to you, Terry. We've also got Dolores. Hey, Dolores, how are you doing? Business owner of a CNA school. Oh, what's a CNA school? Entrepreneur, lovely. Actually, I had a fantastic meeting with um, a fellow confidence coach, Sergei, the other day. He's Russian. And uh, he talks about wantpreneurs because he helps people focus confidence to get rid of the fears that you have from the past and focus on what you want. So he talks about wantpreneurs. I talk about copreneurs. He talks about wantpreneurs. I just love we've got lots of preneurs. And talking of which, I have a wonderful preneur and a fabulous businesswoman with me. She is a very dear old friend of mine from university at Loughborough. And uh, we actually used to live in Hong Kong with each other as well. I, I crashed at her flat numerous times, um, was there when I first arrived in Hong Kong. Um, the wonderful Naomi Denning. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, I did. I live with her. Live with her. See, oh, you can hear her voice. But part of the de today's topic is how, what, what are the tips that you can use to interview somebody live here on screen? And the very first tip is to... Uh, See if you can convince them to come on camera. Um, stick them on a wheelie chair so that maybe you can wheelie them in. Ha ha. And wheelie them in. And look and see, first thing Naomi does is she actually looks, looks at herself on screen. So once you've actually convinced your wonderful friend to come on camera, the next thing you need to do is let them know where to look. So this is the wonderful Naomi Denning, who is a super businesswoman from Hong Kong. She's a corporate giant in her world. She speaks professionally around the world on behalf of her company as well. She has a fantastic team, massive team. Mega star from Hong Kong, businesswoman, <laughs> still living there. So first tip for Naomi is, Naomi, see where the camera is up here. When you're talking to everybody at home, I'm going to straighten you up slightly because we're, again, we're, we're having to be cosy here. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're kind of backing up a little bit. So first thing I want you to do is make eye contact. You have to look Hi. through the camera <laughs> lens there. Um, and when you talk to people, let's sit you up straight. You want to be on the front, be on the front foot always, people. So help, the next tip is always help your guests to look the best that they can look when they come on camera. Now, you don't want to overpower them with too much camera-ready face. 
so that so that actually you're kind of balancing and you're looking you're looking well with the person you're not overtaking them on camera so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to turn to my wonderful friend naomi and do a welcome for her let your guests know that this is simply a chat that's all we're going to do is have a chat on camera she's allowed to have fun she's allowed to smile and now she's finally allowed to talk <laughs> so hello naomi denning tell us about what do you do first of all and um and then we'll go on to how and if you use video within the business what do i do um hi everybody <laughs> i live and work in hong kong as lottie said but i look i work around the region i look after uh, the asia pacific region and we help um, funds to meet their investment goals whether it's a pension fund or a sovereign fund or um, an endowment fund. So it's all to do with individuals, business, institutional, institutional. rather than individuals, okay. really. Although increasingly the world is individuals looking after themselves. Making making mega bucks, eh, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> you, if you're in Hong Kong, you're going to have to go and say hello. Um, so, so, Naomi, we were talking, literally, she has just stepped off an aeroplane and I had to dash out and go and collect something for um for our a square community party tomorrow and leave her here to get herself a cup of tea. And then I drag her in to do this. <laughs> so, so Naomi, um, what is it about how convincing I was that actually you you've now let me drag you on camera? Oh, you're just <laughs> crazy and lovely. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Fantastic. Because well, you know I hate yes. the sound of my own voice. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's one of the things when you know that you've got a guest on is the first tip is make it a bit of fun. You're never going to get somebody to come on camera with you unless you actually make it a bit of fun and that it's it's simply going to be a chat. We're simply going to discuss. Now, um, obviously, the discussion topic for today is about video. Um, and now one thing, the other thing you'll notice, boys and girls, is that when you're on camera with somebody else, you want to avoid this too much because this is just that you can see the hair going. This becomes a distraction. But what I want to make sure as well is that when Naomi's talking, I still occasionally connect back with you through the camera lens. So I can't simply talk to Naomi, she and I like this, and totally ignore you guys because then you feel like the third wheel at the party, don't you? So always make sure that you can find the way Tilt your chin. So I'm not, not actually necessarily looking too much directly at Naomi, but I can still glance back to you. It can look a bit solid and fixed. So the other sneaky thing I do, you stay right there, is by me coming slightly behind Naomi, I can actually, it's more easy for me to... Can I look at you? Yes, you can look at me because you're the guest. You can do whatever you like. <laughs> Nimi, I, if I call her Nim, by the way, that's just what we used to call her at university. Naomi becomes Nim or Nimi. Um, so you can do whatever you like on camera. So I, by, by coming back slightly, can you see that when I'm interviewing, it's easier for me to look at Nim and look at you at the same time? So let's get on to a bit of topic of the actual topic. Yes, it's about how to interview somebody on screen. But let's go, let's go into a couple of questions. So, Naomi, you, um, within the financial world, do you, obviously it's with a large corporate company um, across Asia Pacific region. Do you use video or what do you think of as business video within your organization? Um, yeah, we, we use it a bit for different things. Um, most of the things that I've done, we either use it internally. Mm -hmm. to, if we want to tell a story or we're trying to get a message out to our our colleagues. So um, that's your private intranet. So that's, that's, yeah, that's the internal intranet. So you know, into, people people don't have as much time to read. Yeah. So they're having to click on a button while they're, you know, get, um, getting ready in the morning for work. And that's when I think they tend to look at these internal messages. Mm. We, we use it as well. Um, for kind of PR stuff. So if, if okay. we've got messages that we, we want to get out to our clients or through the media, um, we've we've moved a, away from print media to digital media. And so some of the things that we sponsor, we'll, we'll get an opportunity to do a little video as well. So we and get- and do, you, do you do those yourself or do you have a team of people that comes, do you have a production team or do you actually have to go on air yourself as well? 
Well, we don't He's do so them. Shy. We <laughs> we don't do them live, so we okay. tend we do tend to do them internally. Um, in today's world, you know, an iPhone or a little video seems to suffice. So we do use we do use them ourselves. Actually, I've got to interject on that one because yes, boys and girls, you are talking to a re Asia region manager of a massive financial institution company, global company, and they use iPhones for their videos, for their social media videos. Hallelujah, we don't have to go all the time to the pro production teams. So, um, so Naomi, so you do them intranet, you do for your promo videos. Do you ever use live streaming tools like like Blab? Obviously, maybe not Blab, because I think this is the first time you've seen it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, I, I, I haven't, I'm not aware that we are using live streaming. Um, sometimes we we get asked to go on, on Bloomberg or TVs. So we do do a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. I think I've done, yeah, I've done one, one or two. I've, I've seen you. I've seen you one years ago. I remember you went on Bloomberg. I don't then. think I watched it myself. <laughs> no, I used, I used to make her, I used to force her to watch it because you can never get better unless you watch <laughs> yourself. You never get better. Yeah. Uh, um, but but do you um, are you using video conferencing for example? Because I know in big companies you used to have massive video production video conference yeah. productions. Um, we don't. We we use more voice conferencing. I have to say. So we do have meetings with people from many different locations. But we do we do use it a bit. Um, we definitely. So in our Australia offices, I know when the Sydney and Melbourne teams are, are having meetings, they do, they do it on video so they can see each other. Um, and I do. I go to some meetings, not necessarily internal ones. I actually sit on a, a committee and right. w where there's people in Hong Kong, London, and that one is done by video conference. I, th I think. I think it's coming. Yeah. Oh, it's it's definitely whether they like it or not. It's definitely coming. Yeah. We know that Terry Brock. You know that as well. Now, actually, there's a message here from Terry. I struggle with facial expression. Um, over, sorry, thank you, Terry. Very good advice, Lottie. The where do I look? Uh, question is difficult for a lot of people. Thank you for sharing that. Well, there you go. Thank you, Terry. And I struggle with facial expression because oftentimes my expressions seem awkward or forced to me. Now, I presume that you're talking, you're listening face. Uh, oh, I, I did, a, I did a, a blab a few weeks ago about what do you say when you say nothing at all? Yes, says, yes, says bursting. <laughs> thank you, April Bursting Autism. Um, your listening face. In the television world, it's what we used to call your noddies. <laughs> when you're listening to somebody else talking, it's very, it can be, I'm trying to look earnest at, ooh, mm, that's very interesting what you're saying here. And people can get very fixed or very mad faces. So the trick a lot of the time is to actually forget the questions that you want to really ask or simply have less than one hand, three to five, three to five questions that you want to ask that go through a flow of the topic, but that also you know what comes up from your guest is actually far more interesting often than the questions that you desperately want to ask. Now, you might have a theme. So, yes, know that you're going to get back on track. Know that it's always going to happen, but allow the chat to occur. Let your guest, your guest has given you the privilege of, here's me, going against what I would normally be saying, but I'm doing that because we're, because we're coaching you live and I'm using Naomi as a guinea pig here. Um, when, you, when you are interviewing somebody, make sure that you give them the time on air. And when you're listening, actually be, yes, not sideways on the kind of chin tilt, but be properly listening to them and nodding. And when there's a, a moment, like you would if you look back there, when Nim mentioned something that was about how other people do it, or there was something fascinating, that's when I went to you guys. And I, I give an expression. Or if she says something funny, I'm not going to go, ah! <laughs> like laughing fake laugh. No, it's kind of like, well, you come in and you laugh, but you, or you kind of go, you make a, 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 an aside comment like we do on stage. They're called asides where you look back at the other person. You're breaking the wall of the audience, the fourth wall of the stage on theatre uh, to connect with you again. So remembering that, that you guys are there as well. As I said, it's called work the triangle. 
we've got to join the two of us as guests. My job as the interviewer is to connect the guest to you because most of the time the guest is going to be most comfortable looking at you, the interviewer, not necessarily at the camera. So that's actually leads me nicely onto my next question for Nimi is like, so you're talking, you do use video and that's within a big corporate organization. Yeah. How do you feel when you have to go on camera with well, people? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> normal. See, she's normal. I do have some normal friends. Now, but, and, I'm, and I'm actually going to bring you in a little bit closer yeah. now. So because she just said she doesn't like it, I'm going to challenge her even a little bit more. Well, I did. But I did want to say that I, I do agree with what you just said. Whenever you're kind of preparing for these things, the rehearsed bit is always the most stilted. And when you actually get off, you know, go off and follow the theme and then people are much more natural and, and passionate. And I find that, you know, I find that even if it's not with video on a panel, it's it, when people get in and, and there's something they're interested in and that's when they they get most relaxed yeah totally so and hopefully you guys type a one and if you if you agree on that one because i i think that's really really important um thank you very much april um, i think that's a really important comment there from you and and i think especially like as i said before i've known nim since university and never been would never describe herself as an extrovert and one of my key messages that I'm always saying, because people always ask, do you have to be an extrovert to go on camera? No, you don't. I, some of the best presenters I know are actually introverts who take the time to share their message and really care about what they're talking about. And that's the most important thing. It's that Nemo was saying, when, when it is real, it comes across as real. And that's the number one coaching thing that I'm always talking about coaching thing number one coaching tip I'm always talking to you about is we've got to be real on real as we say and being real doesn't mean being hyper real this is really real it's actually no just be the best you that you can be so whether that's being relaxed because you're here chatting with a friend or whether this person is somebody that you don't even know Again, your job as the interviewer is to make them comfortable. So smiling at them. Remember, smiles beget smiles. This is your this is your number one tool on camera. <laughs> so let's come back to, to another interview question then. See, and look, this is the other thing. <laughs> Always check. I, I'm actually, I'm cuddling. I'm cuddling very closely to keep her in shot here. So again, help your guests to make sure that they stay in frame. Help your guests to make sure that they're comfortable here. <laughs> Um, so coming back to how you how you might use video, and you say that when you get on camera, you just go, mm, don't like it. Would you be happy to share? What, do you know what it is about it that you just go, I don't like this? Do you know why? Or can you pinpoint anything? I don't like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> right. Okay. And do you know why? Most, that, again, that's a very normal thing, folks. I, I should bet most of you out there probably think that uh, this is the same thing. Do you know why you don't like the sound of your own voice? No, you tell me. Yeah, well, there's, well that's, <laughs> there we go. And there's actually a scientific reason. Because when we record our voices, it's basically going, the way it goes through um, all of the machines that we're working with here, we actually lose 60% of the sound of our own voice. So if you think we've got fluid and, and hollows and echo, we hear our voices echoing with this lovely richness that we hear live and in person. But once it's gone through a machine, suddenly your voice can hear it can sound really flat and really dull. That's because it's all gone. Same thing with your energy on camera, 30%, because we're 3D seeing each other live, but you're seeing us 2D. So you have to boost that energy a little bit more which is the other reason that the smile is so important, getting the smile on the face. <laughs> but a real smile, Miss Neri, a real smile. See, look at the laughter when it's a real smile. You can see the difference. You can see the difference. So let's come back to um, how, this is, what, what would be like if some of, from your personal experience, again, if you can't think what's happening, I'm, I'm going wrong here. I'm losing the track. I'm, I don't, I've lost the specific question I was going to ask. Keep going find the way to keep going with it. So the the point of the question that I wanted to ask is having admitted, thank you very much, that, that you don't, there are some things that you don't like, um, what advice or help 
do you feel you would want to help you be more comfortable on camera? Help. What advice do I have? Um, well, no, not necessarily what advice you have, but what, what, what advice might you ask for? Or do you think your team, is this a common theme that you see through your team that everybody goes, camera, Ugh, get away from me? Um, what, what would be the number one thing that you've seen other people as their fears or what help would they want to know about? I think knowing in advance what you're going to be talking about is helpful. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's... Because then you can kind of frame in your head what are the key points you want to get across. So a little bit like your questions, I think having knowing and being able to think ahead of time, yeah, is is helpful. Yes, and and she, part of saying that the another rule: never throw your guest on camera. And I actually have because part of the reason I did because she's such a lovely old friend of mine. I knew that this very smart lady was going to come up with statements like this. <laughs> Because I also know, as an introverted preference in behavioural style, that you like to prepare. You like to know what's going to happen next. Though sometimes, if I were in Hong Kong, a Bloomberg TV presenter who suddenly grabbed you at a conference, you might not be able to have that luxury. So have you ever been in that situation? Not on TV, no. Not on TV, but, but it can happen and it, and it might happen. So again, like for somebody who, for yourself or for your guests that you're inviting on, yes, give them a, a brief about what's going to happen. I literally said, we're just going to chat. We'll chat about video and do you use video for work? That's all we're going to do. And along the way, I'll be, I'll be giving the advice to you and the viewers uh, as to what can work and a few tips for interviewing somebody live. So Hopefully you're getting some of that. Is it working? <laughs> and again, so part, that's again part of it is, is connecting back and checking in with your viewers of your audience, as well as with your guests, that everything is okay. Now this is cheating. This is faked, of course. Uh, but there is another golden tip if you can to obviously give the preparation time to your guest. Make it easy for them. If you make it easy, make it easy, make it easy, they're more likely and willing to want to come on with you and want to come on with you again. <laughs> we'll find out whether there's, that's a yes answer at the end of this as she's sneaking away from me on camera here. <laughs> they again, put them, putting them on a rolly chair, they can roll away themselves. So I'll get her back in, ha <laughs> ha, on the wheels. <laughs> so, um, for your first choice would be to have that preparation time. How about, how do you feel yourself when you're talking to a camera? Have you ever been in a situation where you've literally had to talk at the machine or through the camera, as I always say, or are you normally in this kind of situation? Um, most of the stuff that we do, we are, it, we're not, it's not really conversational. Okay. So we're, we are preparing something that's going to be pieced together and we're, we're offering our views. So um, that, well, that's the ones I was describing when we're trying yeah. to get an internal message out. So you do have to look straight into the camera, which can be a bit disconcerting anyway, but, but yeah, it's, it's not, um, it's not really live reactive type of stuff. You yeah. Know, you know what the questions are and you've kind of prepared what you want to say. Yeah, and do, do you find for yourself, you obviously that, that preparation time gives you the the ability to release the information as you need it? Yeah. And, and being I, such an expert and a speaker in the field anyway, you're quite comfortable with that these days. Yes. I mean, I'm more, it's easier to be comfortable when it's, when I don't know what it is about when it's being recorded, because I don't, I'm definitely not as, com not as uncomfortable when I'm speaking on stage. Yeah, because you are fab on stage as well. I mean, you're very, very powerful on stage because of the the depth of knowledge and expertise and the stage presence that you bring to that. And I think that's the difference. It's really interesting that you're saying that talking at the, as I say, talking at the machine, that's mm -hmm. what I always say. People, it does disconcert people quite a lot with that. Um, what would be the help that you might ask for? Like if I was going to give you any advice to help you with that, what would it be? What questions would you ask me about that? 
about the the preparation. Well, no, not necessarily the preparation, because most people will go to preparation because we all like to be prepared. But actually, as I always say, this medium is a visual medium. So the first impact you're going to have is a visual impact on people. So are there any questions that you've always gone, how do I talk to a camera or what do I do or anything that's even popped in when you've been doing one going, oh, I wish I knew how to do that or yeah. how to make this better? I think actually one of the tricky things is what you said at the very beginning is you, you kind of want to see, or, or especially when the screen's there and you can see yourself, it's difficult to look at the look at the camera instead of looking at the screen. Yeah. So how do you... Well, how do you avoid that? How do you avoid that? I think that the the first the the first tip I always say to everybody, and I repeat this, you'll hear me say this week on week on week on week, is that you're never talking at a camera. You're always connecting through, connecting me to you through. So that's the first thing you have to think of. And you know, live you can watch your audience and you can see. Oh, I'm oh I'm seeing Naomi's nodding now. So she's <laughs> understanding what I'm saying. You get some interaction with this the machine. There's no interaction. So the top tip always is to think: Who am I talking to? Who's that person? And then think: Right, if they were, if we were sitting at a bar or standing at, at sitting at a cafe over a table, I wouldn't talk to them as if I was talking to them like this. I wouldn't spend the time looking at myself on screen. So if you look at the screen now, Naomi, um, you'll see that I, it doesn't look like I'm making eye contact. If I'm looking down here, typing a message out to people, again, I lean forward because I'm looking down. Even if I look at myself on the other screen, I'm not making eye contact. But as soon as I look back at the camera, now I can stare at the camera and it makes the eyes go very, very blank or I can shake that out and start thinking, who's the person that's on the other side? Who's there? Then what you need to think of is what's the mood and the theme of the content that you're sharing? So if you're, if you're thinking about what you have to present as the expert in your financial fields, in your fund fields, what kind of theme or mood would you say is the predominant mood for what you need to present? Um, the, the, I I see a mixture it's because you know there's an element of you know, you've got to get your messages across in a, a sort of semi a reasonably serious tone. But mm -hmm. if you if you're a hundred percent serious, then you you lose people. So you've got to vary the tone. You've got to. You've got to make, you know, you've got to smile a bit. You've got to make the odd humorous joke, um, but you've also got to emphasize when it's a really important message. And actually, did that brilliantly there. It is. It's it's changing the pace. Talking about your voice, you're saying that's the one thing you really don't like is your voice. Which actually, I think she's got a fab voice myself. I love I love Nemi's voice. I think it's wonderful because so often she talks with a smile, and you hear the talking with a smile that comes through and the warmth. But the pause. And the emphasis when you're hitting the key points, changing vocal variety holds interest. So that's a good tip. And I'm really glad that you brought up that even though it's serious business, it doesn't all have to be deathly serious because we will lose people. Definitely. If, if it's all financial funds and oh, invest your money here and you've got to do this here and this is you, you will be ruined if you don't do the advice, follow the advice that I give you all doom and gloom that's very, very dull. But the perception is that finance is serious. So what other words would you use to describe the seriousness? Like if, with, if we're wanting to avoid simply being serious the whole time, but you need to really push something home or there's a key important theme, what kind of moods or feelings would you describe um, I I think in some ways it's more about adding variety with stories, anecdotes. So don't, you know, see if you can relate it to something that people can relate to, especially yeah. if they're not financial people, you know, heavy financial people themselves. You've got to make, make it something they can, they can relate to. So yeah. 
Absolutely. Again, from a professional speaker, and Terry, you'll like that being a professional speaker yourself, Hall of Fame speaker, no less. Um, it's the storytelling, yeah. and that's or one relevant, thing. You know, a relevant news up. You know, if it's a if it's a conceptual theme, but there's something relevant in today's news, then yeah. bring that in as well. Yeah, but I, I think part of the reason that I'm pushing you for the moods and the the kind of what are the words that you would use to describe is that. Yes, even with part of your story, when you've got your content and you know the path and you know where you're going to go, there is going to be one overall mood of this theme of this particular point that you're discussing, especially on video. There are either going to be one or two minute promo videos like you mentioned before, or you've yeah. got a story to tell or a, an important piece of news. So serious never really cuts it because we all have this perception of serious <laughs> so what I always say to people is define your emotional connection and actually be real on camera and when you're talking through to people on the other side is think of the moods and the moods that you're going to adapt and change as you flow through yes there may be the light-heartedness where mm -hmm. you can tease you can cajole you can entreat people to be part and parcel and stay with you so what other words would you use for financial market news other than serious? What words well, would you use to describe that? That could be more exciting and more... To uh, the mood. Yeah. And the other thing I'd say about the mood is the mood needs to be relevant. Absolutely. So if, if things are all doom and gloom and you, you're too lighthearted and your audience is stressed, then they'll, they'll be annoyed with you. Yeah. And, and vice versa, if it's all... If it's all good, then they want they want you to be reasonably happy. So you, you've got to make sure that that you know you're you're relating to the emotions and the feelings of your audience so yes. that they can relate to you. Yeah, absolutely. That, and again, this is all very important as part of your preparation. That as the camera coach, I'm, I guess she's such a good student. She's bringing up all the things that I was knew she would because she's so fabulous, smart lady. Uh, Yes, you need to you need to know what your audience needs to needs to need from you, wants to need from you, uh, and be appropriately matching, appropriately themed in your presentation style. And at the same time, to make you be real connecting through, you then need to think for yourself, therefore, what what am I going to do to my audience? Am I going to entreat? Am I going to plead? Am I going to um, enchant? What's the, the verb? The, and this is all the performance, the acting background again on stage that I always bring the confidence to confidence on camera is my acting past background. What's, what's the overall one mood and then what you want to do to this, this audience so that they will do what you want them to do? And I would say in the financial world, it's either, if it's an internal message, it's either damn well get out and do this you've got to follow this advice right here because it's really important and we could lose money if you don't or our clients could lose money if you don't yes so really important messages uh so the overall move for that rather than deathly serious it could be a word think of more exciting descriptors think of more exciting adjectives that you could use so we know that you're going to to enchant or entreat but the overall mood, rather than serious, can be uh, that it's, it's imperative, uh, that it is a challenge. You're going to challenge. It's a challenging story here. So do you see what I mean? A sense of urgency. Yeah. A call to action. Yeah. Well, you, obviously, you're going to have your call to action at the end. So because every viewer is going to you're going to want them to do something as a result of watching you. So as I always say, what do you, what do you do as a result? What will your viewer do as a result of watching you? Uh, the more you can actually create a newspaper headline, whether it's for an interview or whether it's for being on camera. Um, and actually, especially when you're interviewing somebody, I think as well, that there needs to be that overarching theme. But as you've seen with us, we've been, yay, we've been, hmm, we've been serious. We've been, we've been teasing. We've been, there's a whole variety of moves. And every moment you can change, you can flex, you can adapt. But the overall mood I wanted to have here was actually far from serious. I wanted this to be lighthearted. And that was for me, I chose lighthearted fun as the core theme. And because of that, 
I had an inkling that I'd be able to convince my buddy here to come on camera with me. <laughs> and, and so we've kind of gone a little bit of a, a full circle uh, with a full circle with that. So when you have that overall theme and you know what you want to, the reaction you want from your audience, therefore what you're going to do to them physically, and yes, Nimi's just pointing out the time for me here. Terry says, got to run, drat, really good content. Thank you very much, my darling. We're just about to finish up. Um, do you have a recording of this? Yes, I will put this up onto YouTube and um, hopefully I'll save it on the Blab and it'll be going to my new website. All my Blabs now go to my new website, confidenceon.camera. I'll put the link in here um, so you can see that here too. Dup, 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 dot confidence on dot camera. What you'll see is... I've done a future-proof website design. There ain't no menus on the top anymore. Go and have a look. I'd love to see your feedback, hear your feedback, and see what you think about it. But there's a new way of searching there, and it's nearly all video-based. So um, very little text in there. I think I might need to add a few bits of text in some places. So I'd love to hear what your opinions are on that one too. But anyway, let's come back to so top tips from today is, yes, prepare your guest when as much as you can. If you haven't yet convinced them to get on screen with you because they've just got off an aeroplane, be as, be as cheeky and as lovely as you can be. Make it fun for your guests to be on camera with you. So yes, have the guts at a conference. If you're at a big financial conference, you go, oh, you've got your iPhone with you. Ah, you know what? That speaker we've just seen, who's a, we've, we've just seen Hillary Clinton speaking in Hong Kong. Do I have the guts as, as, the, as the businesswoman that I am to take my iPhone out and go up to her and say, Miss Clinton, would you mind getting on, getting on the screen with me? If you don't ask, you don't get. Now, you're probably going to get beaten off by the security guards, but somebody else, if, if you bump into this lady at a conference, you don't, if you don't ask, you don't get. But remember, first of all, it has to be polite, but it has to be friendly, most of all, and give them the sense of feeling that it's going to be a bit of fun. So has it been? Super fun. <laughs> she says. <laughs> Match the mood on your face. So when you, the words that make it real, uh, listen to your guest and react for real to what they say. That's, the, that's again, a top tip when you're actually doing it. So preparation, convince them in a mi no, nice, polite way, listen properly so that re you react to them, and then let the conversation go in the direction that your guest takes you. Because most of the time, you guys watching, you don't want to hear what I've got to say because you see me every blooming week. You want to hear what my guest has got to say. So I know it's been very fake and I haven't let her speak very much because we're doing the coaching at the same time. But hopefully this has given you some, actually not hopefully, sure, I know. This has given you some tips to help interview your interviewee and to help yourself interview somebody. Give them a little bit of coaching, the same coaching that I gave you at the beginning um, Naomi can look at me if she wants to, if she's happy, she can connect through the camera and look at the camera. The biggest thing to mention when you went to say to your guest is stop them looking at themselves on screen. So look at the camera or look at me. That's the number one advice there, uh, to give them before you get on screen. And also that if it keeps going, it keeps going. If there's a natural end, it comes to a natural end. You don't have to go through all of the questions that you wanted to ask in the first place and see, make sure that you bring it back to a nice cycle and that you do end up anything else that your guest wants to know. So any other top tips or burning questions that you've had, Nimi, about that might help you next time you have to go on camera when you get back to work? <laughs> Know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> know when to stop. Exactly. How do you know when to stop? I think right about now. When your guest gets antsy and wants to get off screen, that's a good time to know when to stop. So on that note, boys and girls, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much to April uh, for joining us. Thank you, Terry, for joining us. Thank you also to Dolores, my darling. I hope there's been some good tips there for you. And uh, we will be back next week uh, with 
a blab live from the Network Island Dublin branch summer lunch. So I'll see you like a nab on screen there. Now, if the blab doesn't work, I'll be doing it on via Facebook live video, but we'll keep our fingers crossed that I can do the blab uh, as well as, as normal. We'll see how it goes. So all that leaves to say is wrap up with a big thank you to your guest too. So Nimi, thank you so much for being here. Um, now, do you want to, uh, would, if you would like to, would you like to give out any business contacts? There's also give that opportunity to people, help them promote themselves. Now, I know in your situation, that's not something that you like to do. I'm good. Yes, I'll just say good. thank you. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. And actually, it's more, more here on a personal note than, than anything else, because obviously with a lot of corporates, remember, a lot of big corporations, they don't like to have have their companies named and uh, and let people go on camera all the time. So you do have to be aware of that at the same time, too. So I've been very, very lucky to get this lovely lady on screen with me here today and uh, just by twisting her arm. So I better go off and buy her a glass of wine uh, because it's after lunchtime here in Ireland and it's Friday afternoon. Got another radio interview at 4 to 5 on Voice America. Uh, with the wonderful Chris Cooper, another professional speaker. So if you're around, see you then at 4.30. I'll post the link, but I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank Bye. you, my darling. See you all, same time, same place, next week. Ciao, fellas and girls.